They served for us. They sacrificed for us. Their stories deserve to be told. Every military veteran has a story to tell. Join our host, Jay Garstecki, as we honor the stories of our true American heroes, one soldier at a time. The mission today is Operation Healing Heroes. Brought to you by Great Clips. When a place is described as unlike any other, it seldom truly meets the criteria. The Boundary Waters Canoe Area and the Superior National Forest are chief amongst those great expectations. An area where, where humans visit but do not remain. Nobody lives in the wilderness. The goal is to let nature kind of lead the way. Hear the wind in the trees, hear the birds chirping, especially hearing a loon call out, out in northern Minnesota. I mean, that can be a life-changing thing for a lot of folks. Protections put in place by Congress ensure that these areas are protected. This means that no electronics or motors are allowed, leaving only one traditional mode of transportation. This is the first time I've ever been out like this on a canoe. Beautiful crystal clear water. I don't even, it's hard to even explain. It's like mankind doesn't even exist. It's just you and nature. Today, we're joined in the boat and on the trail by U.S. Army veteran, Justin Miller, a man whose harrowing story and undying advocacy for veterans everywhere continues to make waves. So portage number one, gotta get everything out and across the land here to lake number two. So it's just one of those inside out hands tricks. You gotta remember which hand goes on which side. Okay. Far hand is gonna go across on the other side and my close hand here. And then you can just come right up and over and onto your shoulders. It's pretty tough to carry my 21 footer with a 300 Evan root on the back of it. This is a little bit different than what we normally do on the show. <laughs> When you went on a standard with your four-man unit, how heavy were the packs you were carrying? Well, it depended on how long we were planning on staying out. But for a three-day, uh, probably 40 pounds. All right, my turn. I'll spell you, I'll take her from here. Well, what makes it different is the self-reliance that goes as a part of this. Everything you bring with you is all you have. So there's no going back to the car, there's no power, there's no phones. Basically, you're reliant on yourself and your partners and then just kind of live in a traditional fashion. After quite the morning trip, Ben and Justin arrive at camp. This is us right here. Our own little slice of the wilderness, home sweet home. Lighten the load a little bit so we can fish and get back out and see if we can find a fish for the frying pan. This is untouched. I mean, this is natural. Everywhere you know, else I've been, I mean, this is clean, taken care of. With the day fading, it's time to quickly set up camp. Then head back out in the canoe to see if the fish are biting. We got, a, we got a tent. Sweet. Yeah, the tents are nice to keep the bugs off you, for sure. Uh, but usually, my favorite thing to do is just find a couple pine trees, get right in the middle of them, use the pine needles as your blanket, and it would uh, keep you pretty warm. 
those survival skills will likely come in handy on this trip. Finally, it's a living, breathing fish. Woo, it's a walleye. After a long trek and a couple of boat rides, Ben and Justin are finally ready to get their first taste of fishing on the edge of the Boundary Waters canoe area. They have the entire lake to themselves. They didn't have to wait too long before they saw signs of life. Here you go, here you go. Crank, crank, crank. Finally! It's a living, breathing fish. Woo, it's a walleye. Get him in, oh no! Oh! <laughs> Dude, did you see him though? It's a unique kind of disappointment. One tinged with anticipation and exhilaration. A failure, yes, but a promise of more action to come. Oh, we had a nice walleye on. It was dinner. Oh yeah. Defeated for now, they head back to camp. We call these hobo dinners or campfire dinners. It's a real light way to pack in. You don't need a plate. We're just gonna eat it right out of that tin foil. Part of the deal when you come up here, it's adventure. I I've never been here before. We're kind of guessing, we're using primitive equipment. We don't, I normally have enough electronics to fly the space shuttle, but it's kind of a fun game to come up here and even if you hook a walleye that big and lose it, it's kind of rewarding because we found something on this lake that we've never seen, that bit of lure, so. So you said your folks are in West Virginia. Were you born in West Virginia? Grew up there? Yeah, I was born in Wheeling and uh, was there till uh, my mom married my stepdad and moved down to Charleston. Came back to Wheeling and I stayed there till, till I joined the service and I was uh, 18. Everybody I've talked to says the Air Force says it the easiest, <laughs> the best food, the best, they're taken care of the best. So I was like, well, let me give them a call. And um, it was an early Friday afternoon, like, I don't know, two or three o'clock, and it just rang off the hook. I just went to voicemail. I was like, well, so obviously this wasn't, be, wasn't meant to be. Um, so I hung up and then called the Army and it's like it was yesterday, you know, first ring and my recruiter picked up the phone and uh, just told him then, I was like, you know, I'm ready to go. Let's, let's make this happen. In 2003, Justin enlisted as an infantryman with the U.S. Army, deploying twice to Iraq. Throughout his deployment, Justin grew as a leader, holding many titles, including infantry scout, sniper team leader, and eventually infantry squad leader. As is true for many veterans returning home, Justin's battles didn't end overseas. His service followed him home, and his mission to care for fellow veterans continues to this day. If you'd like to see more behind the scenes content, follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel. some great resources out there that guys can look into and 
tell me a little bit about Objective Zero, how it came about, and exactly what is the objective and, and how it works. All right, so Objective Zero came about uh, right after I was medically retired. It was August of 2014, and by Thanksgiving, I was, uh, I was on the edge of my bed with a pistol in my hand. Finally, I called the VA and was like, look, I need help. I said, I about, uh, I about killed myself this morning. I said, I can't handle another night. All right, let me put you on hold. <laughs> and she come back and had an appointment scheduled for me for two days later. Seconds later, I get a text message from my brother Chris that deployed with me my second time. He gave me a, a different outlook. He says, think of it this way, is that you're not broken, that you didn't fail. Just look at it as why you was in serving, the government paid you. He goes, okay, well, look at it as now that the VA is paying you to take care of your brothers and your sisters. Justin Miller took this sobering statement to heart and put it into action by founding Objective Zero, a 501c3 foundation that uses mobile and web app technology to connect the military and veteran community to peer support, wellness, and mental health resources. Usually when a veteran dies by suicide or makes an attempt, they usually do it within the first five minutes. Created the OZ app that allows instant and anonymous connection in a time of need via voice, video, and text. That way they can put in as much or as little information as needed. And then we also threw in filters, like the person who's calling for help should be able to have a choice or be able to filter out who it is they talk to. Objective Zero is run by volunteers and the app success speaks for itself. And last year we had over a half a million transactions between users and ambassadors. here just gives me a chance to look inside myself, enjoy the birds chirping, the wind blowing, hearing the sound of the water just crashing in on the rocks, solitude. Not to mention the occasional jump of a fish. Fish, fish, fish right here. Nice walleye, big walleye. I got a northern, what do you got? Oh, there he is. Oh my gosh, he's got a huge one. Nice walleye, big walleye. I got a northern, what do you got? Oh, there he is, oh my Holy gosh, he's got a huge one. Just keep, you're gonna take a little bit with that one? Oh, God. Oh, we're just gonna crush them now. We got them dialed, we know what bait they want, we know what color. As usual, Ben was right. They don't stand a chance. Oh, there's, oh, I just lost one. Well, uh, he was close. There you go. There you go. Holy cow, did we find the mother load right here. This is when fishing gets fun. We got him. You're on the board. Still got to put on a fight. Oh, dude. Delicious. Yeah? Yeah. And the streak didn't stop there. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Walleye. Walleye. This, walleye. Is, yeah, this one's not as different. This one's not thin. Music to a fisherman's ears. Yes, that is. So that's the walleye, huh? That is what all of the excitement is about right there. With this wind, I gotta paddle back every time we catch one. And usually you have one hooked before I get there. With some sizable leaders in tow, they head back to camp and start cooking. It's gone. There we 
we go, baby. All right, campfire fried. As fresh as it gets, two hours ago, this guy was swimming in the lake. Let me see what you think of your first bite of Northwoods walleye. Oh, mine's freaking perfect. Oh, man. <laughs> now, is it, so is, it, is the hype worth it? Oh, yeah. Two days of paddling, we, built, we burned 400 calories for 80 calories of fish, but that's the adventure. That's right. Well worth it. Well worth it. Words that can describe the taste of a freshly caught walleye, as well as Justin's perseverance. Justin's strength and shift in perspective that led to the founding of Objective Zero has already helped tens of thousands of veterans across the United States, reminding veterans that their service was not in vain and that they're not alone. Well, we have a little something we want to give you just to welcome you to our team and say thanks for sharing your story and just kind of commemorate our days out here in the Boundary Waters and Superior National Forest. This is a beautiful custom rod built by our friends at Angry Bear Custom Rod. And if you look right there, it says, handcrafted for Justin Miller in appreciation of your service and sacrifice. Got the branches there and of course our logo and a beautiful American Heroes reel to go with it. And of course, to be really professional, you gotta have your very own Operation Fishing Freedom Jersey. Got your name on it. Now you look professional. Thank you so much and thank you for all you're doing to continue to help veterans and all you did for our country. We really appreciate it. There's people out there that wanna, that wanna be there for you. Whether, you, you know, whether you're here or not, you know, your life matters, you're important, you're needed. You know, we're not who we were yesterday. So let the sun be new. If you'd like to personally thank a veteran that you've seen in one of our episodes or nominate a veteran to be featured in a future episode, log on to our website, operationhealingheroes.org and click on the nominate button.